At this point, we can go and create an external list, and we can either do that from within SharePoint Designer by clicking this button on the ribbon, or by going to the browser and doing it there. And we expect more people to do it from the browser, so I'll walk you through what that process looks like. So from the home page of our site, all we have to do is click on Site Actions and go to our screen for creating lists and document libraries. So here we're gonna see all the different list and document library types. And if we scroll down, external list shows up right here. So if we click on create, we're gonna give our list a name, and we're gonna select the external content type that we want to connect that list to. And so we're gonna see all of the existing ECTs plus uh, the new one that we just created. So the new one's customer SPC. So if we select that and we click on create, SharePoint will begin the process of creating a new list and fetching the information from that external content type to define the fields that should be shown within the SharePoint list. So we're gonna see fields uh, that exist on the back end shown in SharePoint. The first thing you're gonna notice about the list is it looks and feels just like a regular list. It shows up in the left navigation pane. It has the same ribbon structure along the top. I can go and uh, create and edit items. I can also modify uh, views and customize the list just like I would any normal list. So once this finishes uh, creating, we see all of our uh, columns here, but it's pretty much an unwieldy view here. We've got a bit much information for what we wanna present in the UI. So let's go and trim down the list of what we're actually seeing here to just the stuff that we really care about. So if we go and modify the view, let's go and trim out a bit of information, um, deselect a few of these columns. Another thing we can do is actually change the ordering of the columns as we would uh, with any other regular list. So we'll get rid of a few of the fields. We'll click on OK to save the view. We could also define sorting and filtering if we wanted to. Uh, in the view, we can also sort and filter at runtime just by selecting any of the column headers. So let's go and sort by last name to get a little bit of a cleaner view of our data. So here we've got a, a bunch of customer records. Let's go and test out the read-write capabilities of BCS. So if we select the first item, let's go and edit the record for uh, Janet. And this is gonna load uh, what we call an auto-generated SharePoint Foundation form. So a pretty simple form, it just lays out the labels for each of the fields and the controls here, exactly the same form that you're gonna get for a regular list. So Janet's been attending the conference here in Vegas, and being Vegas, she took the opportunity to go ahead and get married, a bit of a shotgun wedding, so we'll go and update her last name to uh, reflect that. And when we save the change here, this is gonna go all the way through to the back end system. We're gonna update SQL, and we're gonna go and refresh the UI. And so when that comes back, we see Janet's last name used to be just Alvarez. We see the updated value here. And if we switch over to our back end, we're looking at a view of the customer table here. We see the, la the old last name, Alvarez. We click on F5, and we see the updated values. So going back to the list, we're, we're confident that it's working at this point, uh, fully functional in the browser. How do we go about connecting it into Outlook? All we've gotta do is click on the ribbon on the list tab and click on the connect to Outlook option. So we click on that and SharePoint begins the process of creating a package and pulling together a few different elements that we need in order to be able to uh, process this information, pull it into the rich client uh, cache and present it to the user at runtime uh, in Outlook. And this process happens uh, to build this solution package just for the first user that goes to this list. Once we've built the package, it's gonna be a lot faster for subsequent users who come and wanna do the same operation. So as we, we see a dialogue here just asking us, do you wanna go and install this solution? We clicked on uh, install and we see Outlook opening up behind the scenes here and processing information about the list. So if we click on Outlook to open it, we'll see uh, our list being pulled down here. And what's happened is we've created a new PST file called SharePoint External Lists, and we have a folder in that PST which refers to the name of the site, which was Contoso, 
and the name of the list that we were working with, which was customer uh, SPC. So not only do we have that integrated here in the navigation structure, but we've also got the information presented to us in Outlook in the business card uh, view. So it, we mapped it as a contact, and so it gets presented to the user just like any other normal contact that lived uh, in Exchange would. So if we go and open up Janet's record, this was the customer we're working with in the browser, um, we can see the fields that we mapped from SharePoint Designer show up in the native Outlook fields here. So we mapped first name and last name. We mapped the company that she works for, her occupation, email address, and her business address. And there were a few fields that we didn't get around to mapping, and those show up here under a separate tab. And so we get a simple form that surfaces all of that information for us, and this is all read-write as well. If we wanted to go update a value, uh, like the number of cars Janet owns, or the date that she first made a purchase from our company, we can go and do that here. And so this is useful for fields that are not mapped um, because they, there isn't a corresponding uh, Outlook uh, field that they would relate to. So if we go back to the main uh, view of the contact here, we're gonna go and update Janet's job title. She just recently was promoted from a manager to a VP. So let's go and save that, and we see the change reflected here uh, on the business card view, and if we go to our back end, we see the old job title here, uh, which was manager. If we refresh the view, we see the updated value in the back end itself, and if we go back to the external list in SharePoint, we see the old value again as manager. All we've gotta do is refresh the page, and we see the updated value here. How was that? Everybody's pretty quiet this morning. All right, so that was a, a really quick tour of, of the first scenario, how we start basically with nothing in SharePoint Designer. We define a connection to the external system. We save that as an external content type. We create a list in SharePoint to show the information there, and we connect that list down to Outlook. So that took around about 10 minutes. There was a lot of talking involved. That would have been really, really uh, complex and time consuming using uh, SharePoint 2007 and Office 2007. It just takes a few minutes using SharePoint 2010.